it's a lived experience so therefore your life transforms you're actually learning even when you are going to bed you're learning when you're going for a walk you're learning when someone has a lecture you're learning when you're going through theory you know so there's a learning and a growth point in every moment Well, hello and welcome. Welcome to another episode of the Finding Equilibrium Show. Delighted to be here and delighted that you're here, of course, and delighted that my guest today is the wonderful Meta Sorison. Now, Meta is a, um, a teacher, a trainer, the CEO and founder of the Meta, Meta Institute. She, she runs about 20 retreats a year and has been doing that for close to 30 years. I don't want to say things that aren't true, but I know you've trained thousands and thousands of people. And in today's age where there's, we're not short of problems to solve. One of the solutions has to be leadership, has to be learning the ability to, to lead and to support groups and who better to have the conversation with but my friend and um, uh, and, and trainer, Meta. So welcome, Meta. How are you today? In uh, yeah. <laughs> It looks like a beautiful, um, beautiful weather. Where, where are you speaking to us today yeah. from? Thank you, Lawrence. It's a privilege to be part of this today i'm in kinkin noosa hinterland and it's a beautiful day after tremendous rain for weeks and weeks so everything's green and happy amazing amazing so now metra and i had a, a a podcast interview probably about a year ago so where we went into meta's background meta's journey meta's story so i'll put the link to that um, episode in the show notes but today we really want to talk a lot more about group dynamics, about leading, facilitating. And maybe the very first question is, why should leadership start with you? We talk a lot about self-leadership and taking a holistic approach, but why is it important to do that? Well, to me, leadership starts from within. If I can lead myself and I am anchored myself in a calm state and an open mind and a, a focused intention, I can give so much more. And so to me, it's about looking after yourself, leading your body, mind, heart and soul so that you can facilitate change in the world and support others to do the same. Wow. I love that. So maybe if we jump straight in and you run 20 retreats a year, which is a lot, and um, approximately how many people would you have on those retreats? Uh, we're usually 24 on each retreat max. Okay. We just got a small place and uh, the, the trick for that is we always say you have to get yourself ready first and then your team and then the rest unfold and that's a way to maintain your energy and it's also a, a way to maintain a stable connection to everybody because if I'm if I'm prepared and my team is ready and enthusiastic, that atmosphere and energy flows over into the group dynamics. And, and uh, when you're a participant, you then can trust your team and you can trust the leader. I, I love that. And just for people who aren't familiar with your work, how long would uh, the average retreat last? Because um, it's multiple usually, days. Yeah. yeah. So we usually start uh, from Tuesday to Sunday. So six days and five nights. Wow. And everyone's living together and kind of, so it's a very immersive experience. It's a very immersive experience. It's like one of those uh, Danish uh, high school experiences <laughs> live together. Um, all ages, or I should say from about 18 to I think 83, our oldest wow. is. Wow. <laughs> Actually, we did have an 85 year old. Oh, One wow. had a, a retreat where there was two young brothers, 15 and 17, and then we had the, the 85 year old. Wow. Wow. Um, so that was interesting. So we're teaching personal development and body work. Um, but we also expand into leadership and facilitation so that people can learn to, to do their own work. Amazing. Amazing. So carrying, I run events like one day events and it's pretty, it's a, a heavy toll to hold the space for one day. So yes. holding the space for six or seven days, eight days, I think in some, in some cases, yes. how, how do you manage the energy to ensure that the group flows and because yeah. i've been on um a number of your your programs now and i think what always strikes me is by the end of it 
by the beginning of it, no one knows each other, um, yeah. or a few, a few people may know some of the people, but by the end of it, there's a level of um, cohesion, a bond, a culture, which is really special, and you do that over and over again, um, and I'd love to just be able to unpick, because when I look at some of the corporate clients that I have, everyone's trying to create this special culture, yeah. and you do that, um, so maybe if we could unpick that, you yeah. touched on the beginning, um, where you look after yourself first and then the team, then, then, then people. But maintaining that energy through the flow over yeah. multiple days is a, is a challenge. How do you master that? Yeah. Well, it's interesting you ask that question because it's one of the most important things, whether you run a yoga class for an hour and a half or a day retreat like yourself or a summit um, and then also a longer retreat. And I find that is where... I can see a lot of improvement to happen for a lot of facilitators. You look, there's lots of great people out there. So I think it's important to, to create an atmosphere by creating connections. And for that, in the background and in the leadership and facilitator training, we're looking at how to do that. And we're using different theories. You know, there's the Tuckman's, uh, what is it? Forming, norming, storming, performing, you know, so there's there's different flows to a group development process. And that uh, is part of what we're using, knowing what happens to the participants when they first arrive and what instructions do they need. And then further along the way, there's the first hint of disappointment. How do I manage that? How do I, we, we call it, I name it to tame it. So if I'm aware that day two on retreat is a day where people don't get, you know, their usual day to day, they don't sleep in their own bed, they don't eat the same food, they don't have their dog or their partner, etc. So we go in and massage that space by talking about it, giving people different strategies, how to cope and manage that. And then we... Um, we, we get in on the same page. We're not just leading and saying, today we're doing stretches and yoga and theory and business talk. You know, we're actually finding out where are we on a feeling, on a mental and on an energetic level. So we're, we're riding the waves of the energetic space as well as using the knowledge from the theory. I love I don't that. Know, a little yeah. bit too <laughs> no, but that, that that makes sense. I mean, let me kind of play that back because I guess what I hear when you say that is um, you have a, a curriculum, you have a program, so you've got seven days, um, but you tend not to share that. That's one of the things that I've noticed um, having been on the program. So it's a bit like you you trust you trust the process you say that at the beginning trust the process so which means you surrender but as a facilitator you've got to be able to to flex and adapt if the energetic flow is not right so if you've got a plan i.e we're going to cover this tool at yeah. this point but if something's occurred there's a problem within the team dynamic then you have to adjust to be able to deal with that problem is that is, is that correct it's definitely correct. And I guess the, the main part of what you're saying is that you got to find out the outcome. Why don't we share the program? Because I guess most people know the program. They want to know the program. So the idea is that people arrive to surrender to the flow. And then when you don't know the program, you can feel yourself more. You're much more in your own body you're much more in your own mind than instead of trying to follow someone else um, we do have a program and we do mention the program say today we're going to do this this and this will be covered and then at the end of the day we can reflect on that so it's a it's a concept where people get to surrender to gaining more confidence and gaining more skills because the secret to memory and the secret to learning on a high level is to be present in the moment and so that's why I believe that when you're in a retreat or in a day summit, you get to gain a lot more than just half an hour here, half an hour there. I love that. And it, what goes through my mind is these words, because your program, you run a program, that which I'm going to be um, working with you on uh, later this year, but it's called, and I did it last year, it's called Leadership and Facilitation. And it's interesting, really, because 
leaders need to be able to facilitate experiences and um, and you can see that with the with the um the retreats that you that you run but also whether you're leading a yoga class or leading any kind of experience and um, we often don't necessarily think of leaders as facilitators but that's what they are because people to be able to let go and surrender as you describe you have to trust not only the process but trust the facilitators and think they've got it covered you know they're worrying about all of those things which means that you can relax and um, and go into that place where you can learn because what you create are experiences, you know, learning. Um, there, there's the term experiential learning is um, is very popular at the moment. But I'd love your thoughts on what that is. What what is experiential uh, yeah. learning? To me, this is what life is. You know, life is an experience, and and if we learn from a good or a bad experience, life gets better and better. And so when we have an experiential learning, we all can go in and we have an experience, we go in and debrief the experience, we find out what went wrong, what didn't go so well. And so it's almost like a spiral. So every time there is an experience, we deduct the essence of that. So everyone gains. And so you can do that as a group by inviting each individual to gain from their personal experience. And then when you share in a group, you're learning what other people, um, other people's insights and learnings are. And that way you can raise your own knowledge and vibration to the next level. So when you're out there as a leader and facilitator, you have gained from other people's experiences um, because a, a leader and a facilitator is a people person. So we need to be able to have all the skills of listening and communicating, working with your voice, working with psychology, working with strategies, working with, I guess, marketing, you know, sales, because if you're a good teacher, you're also a good salesperson. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things within that whole basket that needs to pay be taken into consideration so each day there's a different experience with a different focus in our program so people can can um, do both personal development and build their self-esteem and I guess having fun is one of the other ingredients that is really important to me and yes. that that then brings in uh, the focus of body language as well as body awareness because I believe in self-care and so that is another part of our way of looking at it holistically and that's why I really enjoy and appreciate working with you Lawrence because you have the holistic approach to everything you do in leadership so yeah I'm yes. excited for the next <laughs> Yeah, no, for, for sure. I mean, this holistic and, you know, just um, personally, that journey to holistic thinking took me many years um, of looking at things in a very kind of uh, minute way and then gradually recognizing that we are systems and everything connects. And you see that when you're facilitating, because when you've got a group of 20 plus people in a room, not everyone everyone's experience is unique because of their individual contexts. And, um, and it goes back to that um, model that you mentioned, the forming, norming, storming, performing. And when you look at a group dynamic through that lens, it's, it's interesting. And I want to kind of pick up on the storming piece because what strikes me about, about the way you work is you've become, because you've done it so many times, so it is a very well-oiled machine, you become very aware of when the stormy moments may crop up it's a bit like there's a kind of iceberg you know like the forming is great and um i've never experienced an environment where everyone feels so welcome at the beginning and then the welcome learning people's names you know that's really a great way to actually form and bring cohesion but of course as you mentioned like day two day three sometimes it's like oh the stormy moments will um will happen and often that can if you don't deal with that those events well that can either bring the team closer together or bring the group closer together or it can create fractions that don't actually heal and really impact the whole experience so i'd love you to talk to those kind of storming moments which could be just people who don't want to participate you know, there yeah. is kind of, you know, like, oh, they're, they're like, yeah, I'm not part, I'm not doing that yeah. kind of thing, which kind of spreads a, a, a vibe or 
more serious <laughs> you know still, well, still being moments how do you deal with those things and... yeah yeah well I, I I what I'm uh excited about is that what you're just saying is actually in the theory so oh I didn't sign up for this I'm not here for this I didn't think it was going to be like this and there will be judgment of the leader judgment of you know the food or whatever it might be the cows moving too loud next door you know <laughs> <laughs> We're aware that this is going to happen either in a major or in a smaller post, um, yeah, degree. So by dealing with that moment, I always like to be a little bit of a step ahead because if I'm a step ahead, I can mention, well, tomorrow, that is probably the day you want to take your keys, start the car and go. Or the opposite would be, I never want to leave. I still love you know, we're all different. And so that is, and you're thinking, oh, my flight's too far away. I'm living in Sydney. <laughs> Get out of here. So there's definitely those human reactions. And that is the storming phase. And so that storming phase happens on day two or three. And it actually happens on a daily basis. So even if you're having a meeting, you know, in a meeting, there can be times where you go, oh, I didn't think it was going to happen, but you got to deal with it. So, um, yeah. So once we get out of that, it's actually we're, 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 we're forming and we're actually storming and then we're norming. So after the storming has happened, if I go in and speak to that with my group or with my team, I'll say to my team, just be mindful today. You might have. Uh, Carl doing this and Amanda saying that and such and such wanting to go home, whatever it might be, they can be ready for that moment and be prepared for that moment. And therefore it may not happen because we will uh, speak it to the group, for example. Yeah. That and then everyone can have a laugh, you know, and they know this too will pass. I, I, I love that. And it is oh, because that can happen. Like when I run summits, for example, there might be people who start complaining. I remember one incident where, someone she, there was nothing for her to eat um, she was and that kind of created it affected my energy um, in terms of the whole thing how do you protect your energy and don't take some of those things personally because I, I often see that with facilitators it kind of it can one person their reaction or their mood can knock their confidence particularly for newer people who are you know running their first retreats for example and they want everything to go well and they're hypersensitive and then they've got someone moaning about the food or the cow mooing or like everything you know what some people once they're in I remember I, I worked for a period in hospitality publishing and there's a lot you learn from hotels because that's why exactly as you're describing, they try to make the checkout experience as positive as possible because, yeah. sorry, the check-in, because yeah. if you have a negative check-in, you suddenly are primed to look for all the issues. You know, if you're like not made to feel welcome, you kind of left queuing for ages. And by the time you get to your room, you're noticing all the things because you're you're primed for complaint, if you like, and it kind of builds. Um, but well, you, you, you seem to be able to deal with that and bounce forward. Like these things are kind yeah. of dealt with directly yeah. it's not like yeah. they're ignored but you're going to bring it out into the um into the group and then um and then then move on but how do you um yeah well so to your answer mom? your question of how i don't take that energy on and then now how i deal with that is um i guess it's a it's up to you as a leader or a facilitator to find out what is my style, you know, because some people would take it personal and get angry. Some people would get sad. Some people would get depressed. Some people would give up, you know, there's different ways of reaction. So that's why I'm motivated to hold the space in the retreat to find out who are you as a leader? Who are you as a facilitator? And what kind of team will give you strength, you know? And so it's like, who are you as a leadership and facilitator or who are you as a, as a check-in person at the restaurant, you know, how do you deal with the check-in and the check-in? How do you create an experience that's positive as, as positive as possible for the participant or the guest? And so there's not one answer to it, but there is the answer to know yourself once again, you know, and then to deal with all those um, obstacles along the way. You look, to be honest, sometimes I might need to go inside, take a pillow and go, oh. 
<laughs> oh, I feel good now. I'm ready. Uh, if it's really, really bad, I have done that. Yeah. Um, but other strategies is to, in a, in a daily or an hourly practice, even if you need to go outside for a moment, look at the stars. So you're shifting your focus and then you're coming back to self. You know, there's, there's so many, so many strategies that you can use. But I, I think it's really highly important to find out what they are. Definitely. Just underlining that point, because I think it's a really important point that the more you know yourself, trust yourself, love yourself, and dare I say, then of course you know that you deserve to be there to actually um, be facilitating and leading. And at times you can't please everybody. Um, and there might be people who are, for whatever reason, it isn't the right time for them to be part of that journey because when you attend a leadership and facilitate a program or a any kind of program where there is an element of um, personal development, um, you do have to want to look into that mirror of truth. And what you see may, like, you may not be ready to look into it. You know, not everybody's ready um, for that kind of um, process. Um, and it can be dangerous to do that too soon. You know, it can create, it can create problems. So do you, just thinking about the form in Norman, do you take care to ensure that people are, appropriate when they when you invite them on to uh, a, a retreat to make sure that they are ready to undergo the training yes yeah. yeah, so there is a, a, a I think we could call it an assessment period maybe where we are communicating to the people who are coming to find out if they are open to coming up to learning massage or they're coming up to do personal development or uh, even facilitation you know it is important because we're teaching adults and adults um, well we are children in a grown-up body but we have got those uh, we're still we're still children on the inside so to teach other people or other facilitators how to deal with different people and how to acknowledge in the assessment at the beginning finding out how um, what this person's needs are, for example, or what they can contribute on the other hand, because when you're working with adults, they have prior learning, they have prior um, experience. So instead of treating them like children, we treat them like equals mm -hmm. and finding out how we can support one another. And I think that's a difference from teaching children to adults and holding a retreat. We all have to, in some form, contribute. And so when you're leading and facilitating that, it's about learning who have we got here? Who is good at talking? Who is, uh, who is an early riser? Who is liking to go late to bed? You know, Who has some knowledge they want to contribute? Who is a yoga teacher who likes to teach some yoga in the morning? You know, There could be those aspects that we can support uh, the group dynamic with. And so in the, in the forming, storming, norming, performing, we also know that on the day of storm, on the day of storming, you don't <laughs> ask people that question because they might be going, don't ask me. But on the day of norming, when everyone feels supported and I know who's in the group, maybe people have gone, oh, I hear that this person is into astrology. Can we hear something about that? Or I'm interested in this kind of yoga. Can we do that tomorrow morning? You know, so there's a, there's a time and a place for everything. Mm, it's like layers, isn't it? It's like a story. Yes. When you, particularly when you have, you're together for like a week, each yep. day you learn more about each other um, through the yep. different exercises. So by the end, you have got, um, I mean, you've got lots of touch points um, because yes. when you're together in such an intense way for a week, you, you, you have a lot more touch points than you probably do with many friends uh, if, you, if you think about it. So it is quite, a, um, uh, you know, quite an immersive experience which really helps you to understand yourself and, and, um, and learn about, about, um, about other, you know, other people um, who you'd never met before. Yes, and, and you just, I just got really inspired by what you said because part of the benefit of that exact thing, we're living together, it's a lived experience, so therefore your life transforms. You're actually learning even when you are going to bed. You're learning when you're going for a walk. You're learning when someone has a lecture. You're learning when you're going through theory. You know, so there's a learning and a growth point in every moment, which is why I love the retreat style. 
Mm. You know, it's it's, a, it's an amazing magical experience if you have the courage to take the risk. You know, to yeah. come along to to that. It's a it's a body, mind, heart, holistic experience, mm. and you learn so much more. Like people always say, "Wow, you know." I learned so much more than a massage or I learned so much more than just creating my program of how to teach. You know, it's, it's a whole mm. different level. Com completely. I was reminded of like within Gestalt, um, I was reminded of a model which talks about the three levels of learning or the three zones. You've got the kind of comfort zone at the beginning and we can easily stay in our comfort zone, you know, go into an um, immersive retreat, pushes us out of our comfort zone. Yeah. But the next level is what they call the learning zone, um, which is a place where we learn. So because we're in the comfort zone, we, we're not learning. But once you're in the learning zone, if you push too far, you're in the panic zone. So, yeah. and it's managing that kind of balance um, and the retreat. And it goes back to what you were saying about the group dynamics and managing the energy because you want for most of the time to keep people in the learning zone because you are pushed out your comfort zone i mean i can talk from my own personal experience and i i you know until i'd um, gone to the um, kahuna train i've never done any body work so that really pushed me out of my comfort zone and into my learning zone and all of the things that that come and i was really and at times i was moving into that panic zone because it was like oh i can't do this you know my you know all of those things but gradually as the days progress you spend the learning zone gets bigger and yeah. um, and your confidence grows through yeah. that experience because as you deliver a uh, massage treatment in in this case and you get good feedback it reinforces that um that um that confidence um, and i think that's healthy you know the, the more yeah. as adults the, yeah. the more we can move ourselves out of the comfort zone and do yeah. these kinds of experiences you always get a lot more like i try i i, I wanted to get more into my body um, and that's that was my intention for for doing it but of course after the week uh, now um now multiple weeks you realize well this is a skill that needs to be that needs to be shared um and and it doesn't really matter what the skill uh, what the skill is it's that kind of experience around it which stands out in your in your memory and the, the last point, and because I'm conscious of time, but we've covered the kind of forming, we've covered the norming, we've covered the storming. The last piece, of course, is performing, which everyone wants. You know, the work I do around well-being at work, I, I talk to multiple leaders and what they all say is we want a high performing culture. That's what they yeah. say. We want a high performing yeah. culture. And of course, that's a journey because by the end of the program, people are performing in a way, uh, individually, as a group, in a way that they would not have perceived to be possible at the, um, at the, at the start. Um, on that performing, how do you capture that? Because that's almost where you make the memories and you're extraordinarily good at closing the loop you know it's a bit like well you watch a hollywood movie if you leave on you know before um before the ending you don't get the whole story or you read a novel if you finish it half when it's the same with the seven day retreat if you leave on day three you're not going to get the holistic experience and cementing the learning but you're so good at that piece at the at the end what are your tips for ensuring that perform that a team really performs well in a sustainable in a sustainable way uh, there's a there's a quote that says a calm captain creates a calm crew and so it, again back to if i stay calm everyone stays calm so if i manage myself throughout the whole process the one thing that i appreciate is that i can then finish the retreat with energy and not being completely drained and I can't wait for people to go. I mean, of course, there's an aspect of that from time to time, but that's for everybody because we give it all we have, you know. So it's honesty, speaking my truth from my heart, and of course, being prepared, and then staying staying um, open to communicating with everybody, you know, and, and reassuring that everyone is having enough time and space for everything they need every day you know so that could be right from food exercise uh, knowledge sharing and then performing so that they at the end I know that they need less help less support but I let them go you know and they okay we're going to create a party on the last night and some people create 
um, theater pieces and some people cook and some people serve and some people dress up and some people have a certificate ceremony, for example, at the, our grand finale and everyone is confident and competent to pick the area they prefer to be in. And then we end up with this amazing event that is uh, unforgettable. Mm. So that's, I guess it's it's just facilitating and holding that space, knowing that at the end, everyone will be uh, enough to do it themselves. And then when they leave, they go home and then they've got to integrate everything. And I guess last year we were all meeting when you were there as well, uh, a couple of months after the retreat and everyone had uh, had gained something. And it was not only in a professional level, but it was personal, relationship related and in their communities as well absolutely yeah it's it's great what i hear you say which comes across everything is you've got to prioritize self-care to be able to manage the energy of others because you've got to be their fathers um, and communicating with everyone you've got to be aware you've got to be sensitive but the to be able to do that you've got to be at your best and sustainably best for that period of time. So I love that quote, the calm captain, <laughs> so that you can, because everyone does, you set the tone for the whole, uh, for the whole retreat. I'm and, nervous. But, <laughs> com- completely. I always look, I, I've got a, two, two thoughts went through my head. One is being on air, air, aircraft, you know, if the plane starts shaking, I always look at the, um, at the, uh, at the stewards because, you know, yeah. if they're like rushing around panicking, then it's like, oh, yeah. we've got a problem, but, they're calmly yes. going about their business like okay we can go so you do set the time the time and that's a huge responsibility the the other um thought i had was around training for like i've run a lot of marathons and it's very similar it's sustainable yeah. performance over that time you know you've got to be prepared you've got to train you've got to yeah. pace yourself yeah. um to uh, to allow yourself to finish well because what yeah. you said is you've got to yeah. finish well you don't want to like crawl across the line and then you're yeah. like, burnt out for the next uh, the next yeah week uh, you want to kind of finish with energy and spare because that kind of group dynamics really creates energy doesn't it, it? Does. you know it just awesome. really really and it shifts energy you know it you know we, we we sometimes we okay the energy is not high so then we might just do something lower and then if energy feels high then okay let's do this now so which is part of why we don't always share the program because we need to also install and in it oh people really want to learn and share now well then that's what we do or if we're feeling tired or lethargic, that's not the moment. And, and back to the running marathon, we often say um, that we're caught. We get we become course fit or retreat fit. You know, then if I've run two or three retreats, like okay, now we're we're ready to start again. You know, so it's you definitely can get fit at it. Yeah, I love that course fit. That's a really good. That's a really good term. So let, let's kind of talk a little bit now about yeah. the actual leadership and facilitators program that you've been running for a long time, and I'm going to be supporting you uh, this year. But I'd love you to, and we've touched on this, but I'd love you to just talk a little bit about the program where people can find out more about it if it's something that um, they potentially may be interested in um, in in participating in. Yes. Um, well, it's for anyone who wants to lead something in their life or manage something in their life, you know, whether that is right from being a body worker to being a professional office manager, business coach, um, wanting to teach. And I guess the main thing is that they are interested in a holistic approach to life and to this aspect for the, because that's a, yeah, that's a must in, in my life. Like if so, a lot of people come who have been a teacher for years and when they arrive, they realize, oh, wow, there's so much more to this that I can take upon to get better results with my students or, or my colleagues. Mm-hmm. So, so it's not, it's not just the content. I think that's one big thing because often we think I want to teach. Yeah, I want to. There's a lot of content, but we often think of our own subject. You know, I want to teach marketing or I want to teach body work, but we don't think about the importance of the experiential elements and what we've been talking about, ensuring that that team flows or the energy of the team flows through the experience. And it could be multiple months as well. Like we're talking about weeks and days and but. It could be years, you know, where you're still managing a team dynamic over, you know, over time uh, where you're creating this special, um, this special culture. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think it's important to 
also think about how do I get a hundred percent participation? Because that's part of when you said before, oh, everyone leaves like content and connected and happy. So throughout that process, that's also an issue that I notice is that people don't always get a hundred percent attention, but they kind of just keep going. And that's part of the group dynamic again. You go, oh, hang on. There's actually people who are tired or who want to do something else. So how do I get everyone on the same page? So that's also part of the program is how do I get 100% participation? Mm, which is a challenge, you know, when there's people who don't want to participate. Yeah, how you do it. I, lo I love it. Where can people find out more about, um, about the program and the other programs that, that you run? Um, we've got a website called High Spirits Retreat. Uh, .com.au and there okay. is more in there under leadership and facilitation oh so. i'll put i'll put that link um below um and any any final words from you meta anybody who's kind of listened to this and thinking um i really want to be able to facilitate and lead classes and groups but i just don't know if i've got it in me um where yeah. would you what would you recommend as a starting point for those people our process allows for a personal growth time. So if you feel that you want to lead and make the world a better place and that starts at home, that's fine. But if it starts at work or in your community or as a new dream, we can individualize the program. So, so there are, I assess every person individually to support their focus. So it's possible to ring me up and have a chat and we can find out if, if, if that's possible. But yeah, we have seen people do it um, for personal reasons and some people starting a whole new concept and others take their business to the next level. Amazing. And just on the business side, I'm going to, one of the things I'll, I'll be doing is covering the holistic marketing um, because that's what we also see is that often people um, build the confidence and they de design their own retreat. And I know you covered that and it's great. And then they struggle to get the people onto the program, which can be very uh, disheartening. And I think often it's underestimated how much effort is required to actually um, build awareness and get people people uh, onto the, um, you know, onto the program, particularly if you don't have a brand or a network or, a, you know, a database and all, all of those things. So that's an area that that you know i'll be um i'll be uh, covering just to complete the loop so that people are not only aware of how to design a program how to manage the flow of um of experience from beginning to end and the way we've been describing but can also then have all the tools they need to ensure that they can build awareness build the brand and um and, and get people to um to participate and obviously pay for for that participation I think that's the key, you know, and, and what you're so good at, Lawrence, is to treat each, each individual differently and find that like, I can call you a troubleshooter, <laughs> you know, because you just can help people see, ah, oh, that's the missing gap. And you've certainly helped me a lot for that. And I'm excited to, to work with you and play with you and see how we can support the next group uh, race to the next level. Yeah, no, and I'm excited too. It's interesting because we've got, we've come from different worlds. It's interesting, but we've kind of met now and um, yeah. and and our skill sets really do complement. It's interesting because it's a different kind of world, but it's all about people and it's all it about fun. leading, facilitating. It doesn't really matter because once you've got those skills, whether you're in a, a corporate environment, whether you're in a community environment, whether you're in a, you know, retreat environment, wherever you are, these are fundamental skills that give you the confidence to support yourself and to support other people and um, and I can't emphasize that enough because often we don't know and I, I can talk from my own experience because I've been managing people since I was you know 24 so you know a fair few years now and when I first started I had no clue. It was like so challenging for me, like so challenging. I only had a team of seven, but, you know, I didn't understand self-care. I like gave everything, you know, like I made every mistake going and it was so stressful. I was so burnt out that yeah. I didn't, I didn't want to even manage people. I just saw it as a necessary evil until I then recognized that if I can master that skill, yeah. Um, and then, of course, everything can open up and you can really everything can work in parallel, you know, yeah. leadership, self-leadership, 
being there and treating everybody individually, which, which is something that I've you know developed over the years and having, having managed and led many people, is everyone is an individual. And the more Absolutely. the more people feel that you care about them, genuinely care, then of course you get a lot more value from that person. If they feel they're just a number and you know it's a generic program and it doesn't really matter what their opinion is, then of course that you'll get the same level of engagement from that too. Well, I, I like to say it's amazing what you can accomplish when you know yourself and when you're using exactly what you talked about. You can do so much more when you have all those background skills. So the more confidence you build, the more you can achieve. Amazing. I think that is a really good point to close this uh, this wonderful discussion. It's always such a pleasure to to speak to you meta you you take care <laughs> enjoy the um the rest of your day and thank you everyone for your time and your attention and we'll see you soon